going to sit here and I'm just going to say to myself, it's not because I'm not popular or no one likes me, that everyone's sitting at the back uh, and the two are going between me and you. It's just a, that was a joke, by the way. The uh, point of the joke was to possibly see if the, in a humorous way people might kind of fill up the front. But like I just said to them, it's a free country. So, Please sit where you want. <laughs> okay, so good morning, brothers and sisters. How are we feeling on the penultimate day of 2012, the 30th of December? We're nearly at the end. How are we feeling? Are we feeling good? Are we over 2012 already? Are we ready to charge forward into 2013, perhaps? Yeah, charge forward, yeah. We've got, what, uh, I think there's about uh, 53 days until Foundation Day. Who's excited? Anyone excited? Yeah. So um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this morning here at 43 Lancaster Gates, here in our family church. And uh, just like to welcome you all. Um, there's some faces that maybe you haven't been here before. Um, so we just really want to embrace you and welcome you into our family. Um, so we meet here every week um, to join together um, in worshipping our Heavenly Father and um, we just really want to express our gratitude to our Heavenly Father and take our time out um, to do so. Um, and it's great to do it with others, so we all join here together. Um, and we have an opportunity during this time to um, praise him and worship him through music. So um, the music ministry will lead us shortly in some beautiful songs so that we can praise our Heavenly Father and true parents. And then we can also have time to, um, to meditate and to pray. Um, so really have a time to reflect on the year that has gone by and... Um, really find ways to be grateful for everything that our Heavenly Father has done for us this year. And um, we also, today, will have a special service in that we'll have um, testimonies from this year, from different members of our congregation. So I really pray that you can open your hearts and your minds to um, a special message that may come from somebody else's experience in this year. Um, so, as is customary here, we um, like to take the opportunity to greet one another. So, um, before we invite us up the music ministry, um, let's, uh, yeah, let's greet one another. So, you can rise to your feet, maybe go to the other side of the room, um, say hello, give somebody a hug, um, and maybe introduce yourself to somebody that you've never met before. If you could all rise, we would like to start with higher ground.
So um, please join me in reciting Family Pledge number one. Our family, the owner of Channel Gook, pledges to seek our original homeland and build the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven, the original ideal of creation, by centering on true love. Please be seated and join me in prayer. Our dearest, most beloved Heavenly Father and our beloved true parents, we're so grateful that we can all join here this morning, Heavenly Father, in your presence. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for um, our lives, Heavenly Father, that we could come to know you and come to know our true parents, Heavenly Father, and we want to be able to express our gratitude to you daily, Heavenly Father, through um, the work that we do and our interactions with our brothers and sisters all over the world, Heavenly Father, every day. Heavenly Father, as we draw to uh, draw 2012 to a close, Heavenly Father, um, we really want to make uh, uh, time to reflect and um, really think about all the amazing things that you have done for us this year, Heavenly Father, um, and really not take them for granted, but um, really um, recognize them and value them and cherish them and really um, be grateful for them, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as we move into a new year and we're counting down towards your special day, Foundation Day, Heavenly Father, on the 22nd of February, we really want to take this time also to redetermine ourselves, Heavenly Father, and really, um, as is customary at this time, make resolutions, Heavenly Father, um, and really have a heart of repentance for um, what we haven't been able to achieve yet, but not let that burden us, but we can leave that behind in 2012, Heavenly Father, and really push forward and make great victories for you and for our true parents in uh, the early part of 2013, Heavenly Father. Uh, Heavenly Father, we really want to offer this time to you, and we really pray that you can uh, be here throughout our day together, Heavenly Father. I'd like to offer this prayer in my name and on behalf of everybody here, Veronica Mould, daughter of a blessed central family, Arju. Okay, so um, we have the announcements now. Um, so uh, first of all, tomorrow, uh, which is the 31st, uh, we have our um, New Year's Eve uh, party, um, which is being organized by um, a few of the brothers and sisters in our congregation. Um, so we'll be having various activities here. So um, you can start making your way here from about 8 o'clock. Um, there will be karaoke. There will be um, uh, Scottish dancing. Um, so a little bit of hogmany spirit here in the ballroom. Um, and there will be, um, you know, plenty of other activities that you can come and participate in. Um, also, our new CART president will be holding a student party. So, um, yes, there will be lots of fun. And then, as is uh, traditional, we will join together in the ballroom uh, a few minutes before midnight and uh, bring in the new year together. So I do hope that you can make it. Um, travel is free on the London Underground after midnight, so you'll be able to get home sa safely as well. So um, I hope many of you will come and join us to bring in the new year with a bang. Um, so other dates for your diary. On the 19th of January, um, there will be a Foundation Day workshop, um, and there will be more details to follow, so just um, make a note of that. Try and keep yourself free for that day. Um, and... Every week we have a uh, prayer meeting at the Hayashi's house on Mondays and Divine Principle uh, study in the cafe here in the evening at 7 o'clock uh, with William Haynes. And on Saturdays we have a Divine Principle seminar and uh, hopefully we should be uh, getting fit with some football in the Hyde Park as well. Um, so... Uh, now I'd like to invite the Sunday school children to uh, head off to their class and they'll be led by Peter Stevenson uh, who will be leading the older children and they will be studying the Ten Commandments and Asuka will be uh, taking the younger children. So let's give them a hand. 
Um, so before I, uh, we invite up Simon, I'd like to invite up the music ministry to lead us in a couple more songs. Please rise.
So good to see you, everybody. Happy Christmas. Is it still Christmas? Do you still feel like you're in the Christmas spirit? Um, I hope you all, uh, those of you who are able to be with family, extended family and friends, that you, you could really have a, a good time together and uh, share, share lots of special moments. And um, now we're getting to that time where we're about to go into a new year and we, um, I think we all know and feel in our life that we're not living in a vacuum and we all have a sense not only of our own time moving forward but we see very much uh, in the world around us time is always moving forward and there's always in that sense there's a direction that's been taken isn't there? The world is going in one direction or another and um, either we feel or we sense that it's the right direction uh, and sometimes we sense the world's going in the wrong direction. And likewise we feel that in our own life as well, don't we? Sometimes we feel like uh, I'm, I'm kind of veering off a bit or, or, or you, you come to that point where you think I've really found my direction, I'm sure, I'm confident uh, of the place that I'm going to, that, I'm, uh, that I want to reach to, and that in my heart of hearts, that's where I want to get to, and, and you see the path in front of you. And that's, of course, a great feeling to have uh, when we have it. But certainly, we're not just standing still. We're never just standing still, are we? Something is, there are always going to be consequences uh, in respect of our thoughts and feelings and actions and, and motivations in our life. And I just want to read you... Uh, some words from our true father, our founder, Reverend Sum Yum Moon. And um, these are some words that he shared in 1971 and the 7th of February. And, um, and I think they're good words for this time of year when we're starting to reflect about the year that's gone by, the things that I've done, the things that I've said, uh, what we've done in our work, what we've done in our relationships and and anyway, this is what he says. Usually, what percentage of your feelings turn out to be true? What percentage of your feelings turn out to be true? It's an unusual question, isn't it? You should analyze the process of your life and gauge the results. You cannot assess whether God or the devil is with you unless you can connect with your internal environment and analyze what percentage of your feelings are right and what percentage are wrong. Develop the mindfulness. There's a Buddhist, Buddhist concept there. Develop the mindfulness in your life of faith. I just, myself actually, just started taking up some of my old meditation practices, my, the, the breathing, focusing on the breathing and trying to get into that meditative, mindful state in the last week or so. And he says, if you develop such mindfulness, your feelings will accurately disclose what is coming your way. When you go out for a certain purpose, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's not just talking about when I go out of the door in the morning, when it, more metaphorically, when we go out to do something in our life. When you go out for a certain purpose, Without even praying, you will sense at your first step whether your journey will lead to something good or something bad. You will sense immediately whether it will make God happy or sad. You will be able to sense this pleases God or this pains God. Develop your faith through experiencing the feelings of God in your inner self. So anyway, those are nice words. Maybe I'll email those to all of us because I think Anyway, if you've got the World Scripture, one of our eight sacred texts, the New World Scripture, you find it in there under sincerity. Um, so this year, certainly, I think, is a year we'll never forget, probably mostly because collectively we all will always remember this is the year our founder, Reverend Samyang Moon, our true father, passed on into the spirit world. And all that that means for... Uh, the future of our movement and God's providence and, and all the kind of taking stock that has been going on in our movement this year. And we're going to take stock for our community here 
uh, in the second week of January, on the 13th in the afternoon, we'll have an annual general meeting like we had last year, and I'll be introducing to you a new concept for our community, a church council uh, of made up of a number of different people in our community, and, um, and also in the morning of that Sunday, I'll try to present, well, I won't try, I will <laughs> present a vision for our congregation for the year ahead and, and beyond that, uh, what I feel uh, is something that I hope will resonate with all of you in terms of where we need to go to next. And today, though, um, we're just going to allow some of our community members to share with us how God has worked in their life over the last year. What significant things have happened in their life in 2012? And so um, they've got just a, a brief time between five to ten minutes each. And because there's five of them, we need to keep it relatively brief. Um, but uh, I hope in that time that they can impart something to you that, you know, it, it's often uh, nice to learn just through people's personal life experience, not always being taught a lesson through a sermon, but just listening to people sharing about something that they've come to realize through something that they did uh, in their life and, and to benefit from the wisdom that they've gained. So we're gonna, we've got uh, Veronica Mould, we've got Dawn Reynolds, we've got Anne and David Hughes, and we've also got Mr. Hashimoto, who's just back from Japan. So we're going to invite Dawn and... Dawn and uh, Veronica are going to come up together to share about experience that they both shared, and so we're going to invite them first. And then maybe straight after that, Mr. Hashimoto, you can come up. Uh, he's actually just uh, had to move back to Japan for some time, so um, he's back for Christmas, and he's going to share a bit with us about uh, his experience of going back there and what he's been doing. So Anyway, let's invite Veronica and Dawn. Good morning again. Um, so uh, Dawn and I are recently back from Champion. Uh, um, uh, Dawn was there for 80 days and I was there for 40. Um, so we just wanted to share a little bit about our experience there, um, our motivations for why we went and also uh, what we learned and what we gained while we were there. Um, so I'll start off. Um, so... Um, uh, I, yeah, I've been wanting to go to Champion for a, a long time. Um, I'd been to Korea once before and passed through Champion for three days at the end of some people's 40-day workshop, and it was like a, quite an eye-opening experience for me at that time. Um, but um, yeah, I, it's been about 10 or 11 years um, since then, and I had a real desire to go back and get the full experience. Um, so, uh, yeah, this year, in the actually in the summer, in July, um, I got a phone call from a friend, uh, and she was like, oh, I'm in LG, I heard you live here now. So she came up to see me, and then she was just like, do you want to come to Champion with me? And I was like, yeah, I really want to go to Champion. And then she was like, okay, I'm going in like two weeks. Do you want to come? I was just like, uh, no. <laughs> Um, I was like, I'm not quite ready, but um, I was just like not in the financial position to go or, you know, things with work. I just, it was just too soon. I just couldn't do it. Um, uh, but then I think at that point I was like, okay, I actually really need to go because I've had, um, I had quite a up and down year um, and I just really needed to get back on track with my spiritual life and um, try and find my next step, my new direction. Um, and so, uh, yeah, eventually, like, um, I started really, like, working every hour that I possibly could to try and raise the money to go to Champion. And then, um, just as I raised the money for my ticket, then, uh, actually, True Father passed away, and then uh, my, uh, my dad called and was like, oh, I, I really want to go to Champion. And I was like, uh, you know, go to Korea for the Songhwa. So actually, the money that I raised for my ticket to Champion, I gave it to my dad so he could go to Champion. <laughs> um, uh, 
Um, but I was like, okay, I've done this so that my dad can represent my family. But then I knew that I would be able to make it back if I just had that same determination. So then I did. And then um, I actually didn't get my ticket until um, the day before I, actually the day that I went to Champion. Um, I actually went to the airport on that day and bought my ticket. Um, I was just so determined to go because I, I really knew that, you know, there was special grace in Champion and I wanted some of that. Um, also, Dawn actually left on the same day as my dad. So, and she kind of said, I, I saw her at the airport and she said, oh, I might stay another 40 days. So I was looking forward to being able to see Dawn. Also, Lizzie, who had gone in the summer, was still there and saying she was staying till Foundation Day. Well, she only did 120 days and came back. Just 120 days. <laughs> and also Natalia was there. So it was nice to go and see, you know, known faces. Um, so um, that sort of really helped me because I was a, a little bit apprehensive about the whole Champion experience because um, it's quite an intense schedule. Although um, as soon as I got there, they relaxed the schedule. Instead of waking up at 4.30, we woke up at 5.30. It was luxury. <laughs> and we had to be in bed by 10.40, so it was great. Um, <laughs> I was just like, yay, <laughs> this is amazing. Um, uh, so uh, when I arrived, it was uh, the day of their graduation. So, um, And then the next day was uh, the 40 days after True Father's uh, Songwa ceremony. So they had like a special... Um, ceremony and so we a attended um, via video link um, yeah because I was really determined to go for that as well um, because I wasn't able to attend the song where I really wanted to be able to um, attend that ceremony so it was it was it was nice to attend that and um, True Mother had like so much seriousness about how we needed to repent and I really like took that on and um, felt like, okay, this is a great time to leave my past behind and really make a new determination in my life. Um, but actually, because there, there was like so many things happening in the church just before I went, so like for the first time, my faith was really shaken, like, and it was, I think it was just like grace that I, w I was, you know, I'd already planned to go to Champion, so I was just like, well, I'm going to go, like, uh, you know, even though like I'm feeling shaky, I'm still just going to go. And um, and uh, there was like a special great works workshop. That's how my 40 days started with the autumn great works. Um, and uh, it was it was really intense. There was like 15,000 people or something. It was crazy. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it was it was quite crazy. And uh, all the 40 day members had to you know do extra cleaning. So I had to like clean the toilets in the Chimwa building on the third floor like five times a day and it was still was never enough <laughs> but um but also um there was a true parents holy item lottery um so we all got lottery tickets and um I was very fortunate to receive a top from true mother um so a top that she has worn so I won like true parents holy item lottery which I was very grateful for and it really um made me I don't know because like I was struggling so much at that point I really felt like that was God trying to tell me that look you know you need to stop being silly I love you and that's the end of it and so yeah I really felt God's love through winning that because I kind of was like really looking for a sign and he was just like sign <laughs> so, um and then it was like even when I went on the stage and like Damon M shook my hand like I don't know just the fact that like she touched me I was just like oh you know I I must have some value <laughs> it just like it just felt it was it was a really silly thing but it was just uh yeah I just felt like oh well she's a really spiritual person so if I was such a bad person she'll probably be like no go away <laughs> or something um but she's actually not like that at all she's really like she has a very open heart a very forgiving heart um and she's just full of love and just wants to embrace everybody with love and um I think it's like so important to um because I think for me, especially, like, I, I have a tendency to be, like, my own worst critic. So I put myself down a lot. But then I realized that um, uh, that actually, you know, God loves us immensely. And that means 
you know, we are valuable to him and we need to keep remembering that. And even though we're not perfect and we're all on, you know, we're all striving for that, you know, perfection. We all want to have that eternal happiness. We all want to, um, uh, to, yeah, to be better than we are. Um, one thing that we have to realize is that there's no quick fix for it and we just need to be a lot more patient for our, with ourselves. Um, so I think that's one of the things I, I really learned in Champion. Um, I was like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I was expecting to be like, uh, you know, floating or levitating at the end of the 40 days. But, um, I really, I think one thing that I learned is that, um, growing is a process and it takes time and you just have to be patient and not be so hard on yourself. Yeah. So thank you. Um, hi, um, I'm not going to say much, but also, yeah, um, I went to Korea for the Songwa ceremony and I was supposed to leave, but I decided to do f my first 40 days, um, first time in Chompyeong as well. And um, it was really good for me. I completely embraced everything. Um, I wasn't really sort of scared or worried. I didn't miss home. I just completely embraced it. I loved it. Changyang, I loved sleeping on the floor, I loved kimchi, like I just loved it all. And um, yeah, um, a lot of it, like we always hear the same, like three words, we always hear sincere devotion and dedication and attitude a lot in Chompyong. And um, I think while I was there, I really un sort of understood what it meant to me, like, yeah, what those words meant to me. And um, yeah, I've, I personally had a really good experience. I was on the Changyang team. Um, I was main. I was main also for the Great Works, the first time True Father attended from the Spirit, my Spirit Work. And yeah, yeah. I knew what I was going to say, but I'm really nervous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I think everyone should go to Chongpyeong. <laughs> and ex yeah. Sorry. No words to try. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, and then I done another 40 days because I felt like the first 40 days wasn't, you know, True Father says that, especially for second gen, it's important that we do 120 days. And um, my first 40 days somehow felt like it was an introduction, like there was something more that I could gain from it. And um, actually, my second 40 days, I was really like, yeah, I knew where everything was. I was used to the schedule, although they did change it. They made it, yeah, they did change it. But I really sort of knew what was going on. I, I was enjoying Hundeke. I was, you know, really making, as second gen, you know, I didn't have a choice. I was sort of just born into this. But now I really feel like I've made my faith my own because of Chomp, like really made my faith my own because of Chompyong. And I have my own sort of personal relationship with God and true parents, especially true parents learning about true mother. I feel like has a woman, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, lady. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of like, it's really important for us to understand that like our value and yeah, true father is true father, but we have an ideal woman and we should really be looking at true mother has our example and now's the time so um yeah yeah it was great and oh i had my birthday in champion i turned 19 there and yeah that was good it was really good too we had a changyang party and everyone like performed and i had a cake and she got me a aju necklace and yeah i received a lot of love in champion by everyone, I didn't, yeah, and chocolate, yeah. okay, sorry, and yeah, so um, I really, really would like to promote Chompyeong, because it's really great, thank you. <laughs> I've been in Japan for the period of time. Um, and after thirty years, I have been in Europe, you know, uh, East Europe, Germany, Spain, here. But after 30 years, to go back to Japan is uh, a bit strange for me. 
and then I was uh, at the moment I have the desk in the Japanese headquarters in the third floor, and then do you know at 8:30 to go there, and then there's a report, do you know, short report, and then after that there's a exercise, do you know, like. Uh, <laughs> exercise, everywhere exercise. Anyway, in the headquarters, it says already 120, do you know, full time, who are each different department, like uh, education department, witnessing department, and then PR, and then also dealing with uh, uh, many law things like that, and also accountant. So in Japan, I mean, just headquarters itself, 120 full time, do you know, working and very, very busy, but in Japan at the moment they have uh, 55 different districts and then 285 churches. So, and then let's say those who are working full time, then they're getting some salary and so on, in the throughout Japan is more than 3,000. So that means the, in December the Temonim came to Japan and he had an event in in Tokyo and the Yokohama and the Osaka, all together uh, 40,000 participated. So still Japan is a very strong movement. Then, <clears throat> as you know, already 7,000 Japanese sisters who are blessed with Koreans, and they are living in Korea, uh, 7,000. And then also I was very surprised, it's uh, more than 1,000 who are blessed with Filipino, Filipino, and then more than 1,000 couples Philippine and Japanese couple living in Japan, and they are not belong to the Japanese movement. They are continue to supporting the Philippine, and then because I'm working now, the they call like uh, uh, international ministry, uh, the, the kind of over mission, like a department. So I'm meeting the many different uh, like national messiah and then missionaries. And the other day I met is uh, South American missionaries, and then she explained all the uh, event, uh, what's going on in the South America. And then, as you know, many thousand also went to South America. And also I met the one brother who uh, responsible for the African you know, missionaries. And he was very surprised. 1990s, 120 Japanese sisters blessed with Cong Congo nationals. And they, are in, they are, have been in Congo, but actually the government, some fight, the war broke out, and all these couples must come back to Japan because Japanese uh, embassy, they pushed, if you stay in Congo, you'll be killed. So that's why they have to come back to Japan, but they are uh, hoping to go back sometime to, to Africa. So... And also United States, as you know, more than 1,500 Japanese also, they are working over there. So when I see this uh, uh, Japanese, you know, overseas mission, you know, everywhere, do you know, <laughs> working over there and here, and then still uh, they feel uh, we're not doing enough, do you know. So Japan should have more organized support for the overseas mission. So that's what I'm now going to ask uh, the Japanese headquarters. And then, so, but it's an uh, organization so huge. So I hope uh, more better like, organization to be established. And then now, uh, True Mother also invest, want to invest for the second generation. And my hope is that so many, uh, something around uh, 10,000 the Japanese uh, second generation who are more than 18, 20 years old, so they are very eligible for the, for the blessing, but uh, so many situations, so I'm hoping all these young people do go to abroad, do something, you know. So my feeling in Japan, the totally different, uh, what I can see is I have been in America, I have been in Europe, and then, but I hope our movement can do better, more, for, for the worldwide uh, providence. And then, but also recently I was recent, uh, studying about uh, reformation, like uh, Martin Luther, 
started in uh, Germany, Carbon started in France, and then actually it's very started is actually in England. Eh? Yeah, the real, real, the, his name is, uh, I, I just, I was, uh, John Wycliffe. Yeah, point yeah point. he's a uh, uh, Oxford University you know, professor, yeah. and he said very clearly this, the Roman Catholic's doctrine is uh, far away from the Bible teaching. So his, uh, like, word went to the Czech Republic, Ian Fuss, also he was also, he took all this John Wycliffe's content, everything, and he spread. And finally, uh, the Czech Republic is, it is the, they reformed by uh, this uh, uh, Fuss, who is a uh, uh, professor of the, this Charles University in Prague, you know. But in the end, he was banned by Catholic, do you know. <laughs> Fight is going incredible. And then, I was studying the Japanese, what is that? why Japan didn't go to Christian. We have 120 million population, and then Christian is on 0.6%. So that's almost no Christians. And I was studying, actually 1959, 1959, I was born 1949. So exactly 400 years ago, before I was born, is one of the missionaries came to Japan. And that year, 1959, I was very surprised in, in what happened in the uh, UK is Henry VIII, he separated with the uh, Roman Catholic, and in 1959, uh, no, no, 1549, 400 years ago, when Japanese missionary, Catholic uh, missionary came to Japan, same time, exactly the same year, the Henry VIII started Anglican Church. So for me, it's really fascinating. It's uh, the Japan or Germany or uh, England. It's so much connecting. And in Japan, it's a very short period of time. Within 38 years, more than uh, 20, no, 20,000 followers, Christian followers. But when the shogun decide, stop. And then they are totally persecuted, and many of them, they are uh, murdered. Mm. So uh, that's why after 400 years, Japan somehow uh, away from the Christianity. But uh, anyway, now is uh, our movement. It's, uh, we, we have the space to grow <laughs> because uh, so many people waiting for the, this uh, uh, our teaching, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, I'm just uh, maybe each three months, time to time, I can come back here. But uh, I want to continue to help the Japanese headquarters, this over mission like a department. And just I have to let you know that uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, our president, Mr. Kajiguri, uh, passed away. Uh, actually, when one month ago I was there, and we had a meeting with Mr. Kajiguri sitting, and we had only around uh, 20, pe 20 people, and, but he is really like a, a cancer, rate cancer. Almost he cannot uh, sit long hours, and then he went back to the hospital, and then he passed away. And now a new president who has been the continent director in uh, Russia, uh, Mr. Tokuno, he has now appointed as a national, uh, uh, our church our movement uh, president. So I'm sure he is much younger generation, so I think Japan can do more, I hope so. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I'm now uh, the Japanese headquarter in Tokyo, Shibuya, so if anyone who come to Japan, I, I'm very happy to have a cup of coffee with you, and so uh, let me know before you come. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> So it's very nice to hear directly from someone who's working there uh, information. It's very different from hearing it sort of second, third hand. Thank you very much, Mr. Shimada. And, uh, and so finally now we're going to invite up uh, David and Anne Hughes. And so it's really nice to hear from Veronica and Dawn and Mr. Hashimoto. And now actually I think David and Anne are really one of our elder couples in our 
community here at Lancaster Gate. So very grateful that they can come and speak to us. So if you'd like to come up, and uh, they're going to share something uh, about their life this year, 2012, what they've experienced as a blessed couple and with God. And, and so I'm really looking forward to hearing from them. And then after that, I'll just give a, a brief conclusion. Start first. <laughs> How are we going to fight this now? Okay, yeah, you start. No, no, you better start. You better start. Okay. Um, it's difficult for me to. It has been very difficult for me to decide what to talk about. And yesterday afternoon, as I was uh, praying, and I was really saying, Heavenly Father, I don't want to say what I feel myself, but what you want to say through me, about me, about our life. And I felt like uh, Joanna in her testimony when she had this student, if you remember, she had this revelation, student, it means she had to become a student. She was looking for a job. I had a feeling, blessing. Talk about you, blessing. So, um, it's why it would have been better if I, co I took after him, but if he doesn't want, I just do it. Uh, you will hear that he's, he will be talking, I guess, about how his life has changed this year in many ways. Uh, he will say how it changes. And I'm very grateful to all the efforts he has made, to be honest. And uh, it brings uh, for me... Um, a much more peaceful uh, uh, feeling, you know. Um, anyway, we have our difference still, of course. He likes hard chocolate and like the creamy ones. So, uh, you know, True. and um, there is other differences, of course, which are more difficult. But I want to talk about the blessing as I felt God wanted that. For another reason as well, a sister a few days ago said to me, I hope all the couples make it by Foundation Day. And she says, she added, uh, some are struggling so much that you wonder if they're going to break up soon. So for this, I want to talk about our life a little bit, not particularly this year, because since uh, April, uh, we have uh, blessed 210 generations of our father and mother, both of us, four lineages, 210 generations are blessed since March and April this year. And we have also blessed many grandmothers already, but not to the 210 generation. And from the time of the 210 generation, I almost fell immediately within, within a week or two, a big change. So, and I attribute the change to all the efforts he made and thank you to him and to Heavenly Father for that. But I attribute the change to our ancestors as well. So I want to talk about what our lives has been in general. We are blessed for 34 years. And for the first 18 years, we were going through very beautiful meadows sometimes, very beautiful meadow, you know, for example, the birth of our son was an incredible time of joy. But we had also a lot of rocky paths and steep hill to go in, down, and up. But after going to Champion in 1996, it became more difficult after 40 days in Champion. And mm -hmm. we were told at the time that it's because the most easy spirit who respond to, to them anymore, leave us and are liberated. But the most evil remains still with us. So we don't have the help of the best spirit who have left us. We have the attacks and difficulties, the challenges given by the evil spirit. So then, okay, from that time on, I tell you, it was not a rocky path. I was in a cave. I'm going to talk about my life. I don't know, he probably went through the same thing. You know, if you go in a cave, 
So you know there is an entry and there is an exit. But in the cave, you go down like this and up like that, and then it becomes sometimes and another part. And you have to come go, and you have to turn like that, turn like that, and you don't see the end. Okay? You have a light. That's your faith. My faith, my faith was telling me there is an end. God is waiting for me at the end. That's my faith. Then I have a stick because in the in those hill and cave you have to walk with a stick or it's dangerous. That's my prayer. So without faith and prayer, we cannot achieve anything. And a few years ago, five, six years ago, my son told me that he had been they had been talking with some of the second generations. And they say, you first generation, you are together because you love God and true parents, but you don't love each other. I was a bit shocked when I hear that, but I must tell you, there is no difference. How can you love each other if you don't love God and true parents? This is a false love. Of course, it's difficult, but if we still keep with God and true parents, if we have our faith that there is an end of the tunnel, and if we go through the rocky cave, as even if it takes 15 years in my case, you know, until the end of 2009, to the beginning of 2010, there was no great light coming at all, okay? So uh, it has been really sometimes very hell, very much hell, and I'm sure it was not hell just for me. There was, however, God's love very much in the sense that Sometimes when you are in, in, a, in, a, in a cave, there is a hole in the ceiling and you see the sky. A little hole and light comes. Very small. And you go again, darkness, with your life, with your faith and your prayer. You carry on and you see another light. God give you light. Give me light. Anyway, that's how I see it. And without this faith in God and my prayer life, I don't think we would ever made it. And without the help of people who could bear our pain, or my pain anyway, some friends and some leaders. I had leaders who have always understood my situation, and I am grateful to, to Mr. Hashi, for example, who has been witnessing many things of my life, and uh, it has been a help, and I'm so grateful to have meet, met him on my path. So... What I want to say is that my testimony is it now a testimony of gratitude because I know there is an end to the tunnel and I think now I'm out of the cave. We have still some rocky paths, I'm sure, maybe not so steep, but we, we will have some mud to cross, some, some little river to cross maybe. I cannot swim, by the way. <laughs> but we will have a few things to go through, but we can, we can do it now. I really feel, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly really grateful that uh, we have been able to persevere. You cannot reach a marriage alone. You need two people. When it breaks up, we say, oh, it's both fault. But in fact, there's one, obviously, who is weaker and who left because he didn't have the face, I guess. Uh, so I understand, okay? So to make a marriage work, you need two people. So for me, uh, our life now is much more happy. So um, I want to let him talk now about what he wants to share with you. I hope I've not been too heavy. <laughs> Right. Um, I feel that's very internal, and uh, what I'm going to say sounds quite sort of conceptual and quite external. <laughs> um, but um, since the age of 16, I've recognized that uh, I need to make some changes in my life. And somehow all these changes that I've been trying to make this last 40, 50 years has somehow come together in, in this last year or so. Last year or so. Like, um, 
Yeah, the, pr the, the divine principle has given me, um, how can I say, like a, a map, a world view, a world view. But my, my abiding question was, how does the unification principle relate to me and my ancestors, my history? So, and, and the goal of True Parents to make, in other words, a global village. How does my family relate to the global village? So when I started to think about that question, you know, True Parents wants to unite the whole world and make the world one family, one lineage. So that's what I would call the global family, the global village. So then I thought to myself, well, at least even on a biological level, how does my family reflect the global family which True Parents wants to make? So let's look at our couple. Our aunt is from Europe. My father is a Nigerian. My mother is an Indian. So what, what, as part of the global uh, providence, what does that represent? It, it represents, on a, if you look at the, the globe of the world, and if, if you draw a line vertically or horizontally, you, you get two different hemispheres of the world. So in, in our couple's case, we represent, if you, if you, if you cut the world in, in half horizontally, you've got the north, including Europe, America, and other, other parts of the world. And in the, in the south, you've got India, you've got Africa, yeah, so that's the north and the south. The global, what we call in politics, the global north and the global south. <coughs> and what about Gabriel and his wife? His wife is Japanese, half Japanese and half Irish. Her name is O'Shea. So, which interestingly sounds almost like the Yoruba word, Oshe, which means thank you. <laughs> um, so, in some way, Gabriel's couple reflect in miniature, on a small scale, um, the East and the West, you might say. The East and the West. She represents the East in some way, and he represents the combined North and, and South of our couple within him. So, in some way, we reflect the whole global family, north and south, east and west. So, so in that way, I can see that the unification principle, the unification goal of one world, is um, being somewhat reflected in our family. On the internal aspect, well, that's another matter. That's just the, the biological aspect. But that's what True Pan's been trying to do, trying to bring people from different parts of the world together through the blessing to make one world. That's my understanding. So that uh, has helped me to find a certain value in, in our blessing, a value in Gabriel's blessing, because um, uh, I had some questions about our blessing and the question's about Gabriel's blessing. I thought, oh, Japanese as well. Oh, my goodness me. Nigerian, Indian, European, now Japanese, America. Oh, is it getting too much? <laughs> oh. As Japanese people say, itai. <laughs> atama, atama itai. Yeah. How do you call it? Say, Kangai Mondai, ne? Difficult. Muskashi. Uh, okay. Um, so, in order to find some kind of harmony with all these different streams or cultures in our family, I've had to say to myself, well, oh my goodness me, how, how does my, fa how does my uh, ancestors how does my parents, my 
and their ancestors. How does that relate to, to all this global family business? You know, I had to ask myself, oh, what is it? What is it? And then, then I, I, I think Mr. Hashimoto used the word connections. And uh, so, I, so th that's the word I want to use as well. How, what's the connection between my ancestors on my Indian side, my African side, and, and Europe? What's the connection in history? That, that, that's what I've been wanting to know. I've, that's what I've been researching for the last 40, 50 years, you could say. Uh, <clears throat> so, some of the things that have been helpful to me was uh, the fact that in, in the recent years, the last 20, 30 years, some scientists uh, in America and different parts of the world have discovered the human genome, is that how you pronounce it? Genome or gen genome or genome or what? Geno genome. Genome, yes. Which says that all people are related, they come from a common point of origin. And that common point of origin, they said, is in Africa, on the east coast of Africa. Uh, near Kenya and Tan Tanzania. So that's one point of connection, you might say. So we're all related on a genetic level, genetic and biological level. Our cultures, our, our religions are very, very different on, on a superficial level. They are, on a certain level, they are very, very different. But if you look to the roots of it, you'll find they're, they're quite similar. The world scriptures will bear that out. And the divine principle, the unification principle bears that out. <clears throat> so so that we, know, we know about Hinduism, that uh, India was a, it's an ancient religion. Some, some people say it's 10,000 years old. Some people say it's older. Some, some, there is no record of it. Three minutes? Three minutes more? Okay, so we'll wrap it up. <clears throat> so, and, uh, but the main point I want to make is what I've discovered in my researches is that, um, oh yes, was that in Africa, about, well, as far as they can prove, about 5,000 years ago, in Egypt, written on one of the pyramids' walls was the name of a monotheistic god called Neber Cher. And if, if you know that in, in the last 200 years, um, many scholars uh, did not understand or recognize that there was any um, such a concept as monotheism in, in, in Africa in general, and, and particularly in Egypt. So th this has been a struggling point for me. Uh, because how can we unite the different cultures if, if there's, there's not that common base? The common base is God. So surely God revealed himself in, in, in Africa uh, as well as any other place. You know, not just uh, as some books tell you, ancestral worship, the worship of spirits in trees, uh, the worship of various different objects in, in, in the nature. These, these are all true and part of it, but, but the essence of uh, African religion is that they are monotheistic. If you do a Google search, creator God, North Africa, East Africa, East Af uh, North Africa, South Africa, East Africa, West Africa, you'll find the name of creator gods. So that, that's uh, helped me to come to terms with uh, the relationship between my ancestral uh, Fast uh, and the, the divine principle, which is trying to unite all the different religions and cultures. So that that is it. And by the way, of course, uh, Egypt is a, more than two thousand five hundred years ago was a pure African culture. It, it originally was, but two thousand five hundred years ago, it gradually been taken over by other peoples, the Persians, the Greeks, and so on and so forth. So today you wouldn't recognize Egypt as an African country, although it was Africans who built the pyramids. 
So, and, and, and within that is, that, and those, those pyramids are based on a religious concept of monotheism. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much, all of you, for sharing. And uh, we definitely I feel, when I was thinking about this, we need a testimony in God's heart, in God's house. And uh, if I think about the end of 2013, uh, my, my wish or my dream is that actually, when, if I ask people at the end of 2013 in our congregation, congregation across the ages, I'll be having to fend people off because so many people have got a testimony that they just can't keep to themselves, that they just want to be able to share. And, and, and I think, for me, that's a helpful goal to have in terms of what we do and how we do things next year. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a couple of weeks. But um, it's certainly good and, and very meaningful, I think, to hear about each other's lives in the way we have today. And so, as we... As we heard people reflecting on their last year or their last 40 years, um, then let's take the next couple of days to reflect on this year. Try and carve out some time just for yourself. Uh, however many people there are in your home where you can just sit alone and be with God and with your own original mind uh, and see where it takes you into 2013 where you want to get to, where God wants to get you to. Let's just say a prayer together. Heavenly Father, we heard from some amazing brothers and sisters today. And that is what makes this community uh, precious for me and inspiring for me, that I get to share my life with people who live in an extraordinary way, who see an extraordinary future for this world and are prepared to put their lives forward to build it, to create it, to, to be the pioneers for your kingdom of heaven on this earth. Heavenly Father, just over 2,000 years ago when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, pray, he finished his prayer talking about your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And so now our true Father is in heaven with you and with Jesus and with all the saints and sages. We pray that we can uh, give them a, a, lots of inspiration and hope and joy through what we do as a community, what our families do this year, coming year. That uh, we can do something special, not just for our local congregation, but something that can impact uh, and have and a ripple effect uh, beyond, beyond us here into this nation and, and further afield. Please uh, guide everyone um, over this coming week and we, we look forward to meeting, to again, meeting again, Heavenly Father, as, as an extended family next Sunday. And I'll report this to you. My name is Simon Cooper, a blessed central family. Arju. Okay, so just take a few minutes to reflect, brothers and sisters, as we invite the band up and we'll sing our offering song now.
Please join me in prayer. Beloved Heavenly Father, today we have got just 55 more days to Foundation Day. Father, please prepare our hearts and our minds to be able to, to receive what you want to offer each, each and every one of us as individuals or as blessed couples, Heavenly Father, your blessing on that particular day. Beloved Father, thank you so much for the wonderful testimonies that were given by brothers and sisters this morning, Heavenly Father. I'm sure that we could all we all learn so much, Heavenly Father, for each for from what each and every one of them had to say. And for this, Father, we are grateful. Father, today, the penultimate day of the year, please guide and be with each and every one of us here, Father. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for the offering that brothers and sisters, Father, could offer, that the money, Father, can be used to advance your worldwide providence, Father, in this city of London. Guide and strengthen and be with each and every one of us here, Heavenly Father, as we bring in the new year, Father, and in two days' time. God, strengthen and be with each and every one of us, Father. I want to offer this prayer in my name, Shobai of the Shobambi family, Center of Blessed Family, Aju. Um, so we're coming to the end of our service. Um, I just have a few more announcements before we head off and enjoy some lovely uh, curry and rice that uh, Mrs. Hayashi and Kayo and Yoshi and Masa have prepared for us. Um, so um, also on the 19th of January, um, there is also going to be um, uh, um, uh, like a, a blessing preparation workshop for parents and children, especially people who are thinking about going to uh, the blessing that will be held in Korea in on the 22nd of February, the 23rd. Well, but yeah, anyone anyone preparing for the blessing? Um, so if you uh, want more details, you can speak to Simon about that. So, um, and also um, starting on the 10th of January. Uh, we're going to be doing um, some witnessing. So every Thursday from 11 o'clock, just for two hours. So um, just a really short and focused witnessing um, session. So if you want to uh, join in that um, every Thursday starting on the 10th. So if we have it short and focused, we can bring great victory. So I really hope and pray that many of you will join on Thursday morning starting on the 10th of January. Um, at 11 o'clock. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our service. So I'd like to thank all of you for coming and um, let's really end 2012 on a, a great and high note. So I hope to see many of you tomorrow evening and um, let's start 2013 with great determination and have a great and blessed week. Thank you. Today the world is ours Nothing grey, just real time and colour In which to win the way the hours We could speak till now